all London bus drivers in the 1970s went through the skid pan. It's unfortunately it's something that we don't do these days. Um, but it, it, the idea being, that if a bus went out, was on ice or snow, that the driver was then able to control it. At least it gave them an understanding of what would happen when they got into an uncontrollable skid. With probably the intention being don't get into that situation in the first place so at least you can understand the horrors of a bus going sideways down Borenwood High Street for instance. Several years back uh, the town council came to us and said that a group of on the buses fans who wanted to go around Borenwood having a look at the various locations and we agreed to do it we said I'm very happy to do that because we do other stuff for, for other groups as well and Unfortunately, a lot of the locations they didn't have, so they sent me all the screen grabs over and I was doing a, a film shoot up at Elstree Studios and one afternoon I wasn't needed to do the job so I thought well, I'll go out and have a look and I took my camera out and I managed to find most of the locations but Borehamwood has the advantage of being in some respects a bit of a time capsule where it's quite easy to locate them. Things like the pylons that you see uh, in back of shots sometimes are, are very easy to find and then position the location. I had struggled with one though and that was the Blakey water splash which appears at the beginning of the films and we we went all around Borehamwood couldn't find that one and it was a member of our staff one of our bus drivers who said I know where that is it's first road so I went up there with my camera and that member of staff and he said it was filmed here and to be honest with you it was so difficult to actually see it as being the location because so much has grown there's a lot of trees there the buildings themselves have changed but eventually we, we decided it definitely was the same one but that was probably in my view the most hardest one to find and the most iconic of, of all of those locations but what happens is is that every year um, pre-pandemic uh, the on the buses fan club would have an event at Boreham Wood and we've provided them with buses over those years where we've taken the fans to see uh, all the various locations that we can. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of locations to cram in, uh, but we, we take them around uh, and we show them those locations. And one of the good things is the fan base is, is so large now and it's growing uh, every year, it seems, that there's always new people to come with us and new people to ex uh, you know discuss their experiences with the various uh, shows and stuff like that. Uh, and it, they're a wonderful bunch to meet, to be honest with you. We run buses for Transport for London, we run commercial services in Hertfordshire, we also do a lot of film and TV work um, and we, we're quite a busy operator. I started with two buses initially when I worked for London Underground as a manager and I um, decided I went to a, a London Underground and I said do you mind if I start a bus company and they fell about laughing and once they finished laughing I said can you put that in writing and they did kindly uh, and I applied for my operator's license today I've got 107 buses um, running from three sites two in Hertfordshire uh, and one in Surrey um, and you know it's good fun I thoroughly enjoy doing this I work oh, well I shouldn't say this but I work nearly seven days a week um, and you know never a dull moment here it really is a good life on the buses it definitely is a good life on the buses <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>